Welcome to the, the fifth uh, Open Music Study Group. Um, so for this session, we're going to just sort of look at what, uh, what to do um, after uh, we've generated some music and sort of what is the next step. Um, just uh, was uh, busy at the minute. He's uh, working. So he kindly recorded a, a, a 20 minute video um, explaining um, how to get, uh, you know, the uh, sort of a, an output from um, the, the OSC player in, in open music and how to get, you know, pass that into Max. And um, I think he gives a lot of examples of um, either using a sine wave or sort of some built in uh, sounds. Uh, virtual instruments. Um, so I will be sort of, I'll splice that in. So to start, um, first, I want to have a look at how open music uh, playback information is received in the uh, playback patch. So if you see here um, on top, you have the UDP receive object which is the Max MSP object that um, takes in OSC information. And I've put it fixed on port number 3000. Um, this is the default port number that Open Music playbacks, plays back to. And I've been looking in the preferences of Open Music and I couldn't find a way to change this number. So I think um, the port number 3000 is baked in. Um, I would be curious to hear if uh, other people have different experiences, but as far as you could find, I didn't see a way to change it. So I put it in as an argument because if you want to use this patch with open music, probably you will want to stick with uh, port number 3000. But if you want, you can change it here. Um, just change the number information, send some messages with the uh, port number to the UDP uh, receive object. So then you notice here a routing uh, object. And actually, that is to take out the precise note and velocity and duration and MIDI channel, the typical parameters that you need or that you get from a open music uh, playback uh, from a score object. And so um, if we play back this little chord sick that I set up, then you see that you have different MIDI channels here. Um, the upper line is going to MIDI channel one and the lower note with a different duration, which you can see like this, um, goes to MIDI channel two. And so for most of the patches that I made up to until now, I limit myself to uh, monophonic playback. Um, I use a lot of microtonality, so hearing the precise microtones is important for me. And I know there is this system which, is, um, which uses a wraparound of channels. If you want to um, have a microtonal chord, but apart from computer music, um, where you would use um, s sine waves or, or other fundamental tones, I see little realistic use of doing so. Because if you have a microtonal instrument, it probably will be a monophonic instrument, like a violin or a flute. If you have a chord instrument like a piano or a harp, either you have to retune it and then maybe you want to have, you can set up a special channel routing or you just stick with a, um, conventional tuning and then it won't play back uh, microtonal or the piano can in, in the standard tuning cannot play microtonal um, alterations. So we will see in the sine wave patch here, there it's more simple to combine um, microtonal and uh, standard chromatic uh, notes. But for the MIDI playback, which we will first have a look at, 
um, here, um, I set it up in a monophonic way. It's easier for the for the routing and for the calculations of the page bands. So if we play back, um, you will see that uh, this message from Open Music comes in, like you already can see here in the Max console, and it always says a uh, number, a MIDI send number from the note, a velocity, a duration, and a MIDI channel. And these are the four parameters that um, the typical score object sent out. So there is no way to put in uh, other either information like, uh, let's say, aftertouch or, or you would have in the Bach library in MaxMSP slots. Um, you're limited to these four elements. And so if I play back now the score object, you will see that for each notes that come in through um, UDP to OSC playback, you will get the same message. I'll demonstrate. So you see them coming in here right now. And when it's finished, it goes back. So now that we've seen this, we can actually print, uh, kill this print object. We don't need it anymore. And so since the addressing, um, like the beginning information is always the same. It's always, it's a OSC address and it's just saying, hello, I'm open music and I give you this note and here is the concrete information. So you make a simple root object in MaxMSP to take off the first bit, to take off the address. And then I'm set up a system where you can actually choose which type of playback you want. Either you want the um, sine wave playback or, or uh, triangle wave playback, so um, internal in MaxMSP, or you want to set it to MIDI, where it is actually sending out MIDI information through a port you design here. On Windows, I believe you will need the loop um, BE uh, MIDI router, or maybe um, Max makes some virtual MIDI ports. At least you will need some virtual MIDI device to send it to a DAW or to a sample player or something. Um, so for MIDI playback, I will choose here um, the EIC, uh, EAC output, which is the virtual MIDI output on Mac. And I have here a little, um, it's not really a double DAW, but it's a little device which hosts plugins like contacts or um, synthesizers or whatever you want. Um, and so I loaded in an instance of contact and I set up two instruments, a clarinet and a cello from the um, example chamber instrument library, which I actually like a lot. Um, it's uh, a German developer, um, Hans Josef Winkler, um, who makes these and they contain already a lot of extended techniques and um, they have a good pitch band also. So it's, it sounds pretty okay um, when playback uh, playback uh, microtonally and so um, then this is a bit more technical obviously it takes the fourth element of this incoming list which is the MIDI channel and it sets up a polyphonic MIDI playback so the poly object in MaxMSP is doing polyphony and so it loads various instances of the same patch. And so the same patch um, in this case is generated eight times and you can actually open the different instances by clicking here a different number. So I will, if, would either, if I would want um, patch number two, I would put here number two. And you also see here in the header that actually it says the number uh, of the instance. So I'm not going to go too technical here. This is uh, MaxMSP programming, but um, in essence, it's just doing two things. It's taking again the MIDI channel to route it to the correct MIDI channel in contact. 
And then secondly, it sets up the correct pitch bend, which in this case is um, is calculated for uh, plus one semitone minus one semitone um, pitch bend range. If you would want to use larger pitch bends, then you would need to set up here a different number. Um, I maybe um, if you're interested in this, it's maybe better to contact me personally through the Open Music Forum on Facebook um, because this is pretty technical about how pitch bend and um, microtonal uh, deviations uh, work together. But it's not super complicated, but you need to know a little bit of max um, in order to change this, or I need to explain a little bit mathematically. Um, but so, as you can see here, it's always taking the remainder of the MIDI note, so the 0 0.75, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and it actually um, scales this to a number of pitch bend, to a certain amount of pitch bend, which goes into this bend out object to uh, the contact instruments. And so then the next step is to take a duration. And in order to not have a, not, not have a confusion for the playback, I cut 10 milliseconds of the playback. So the, f the last note finishes 10 milliseconds too early. I'm actually working out a system right now to overcome this, but this is pretty complicated also. Um, because if you make them overlap, then again you have polyphony and then it would screw up a little bit the pitch bends or you get clicks or you get uh, artifact sounds. So for now I just cut them, I, I make them slightly non-legato. But it's so short that you actually, I, I really can't perceive it. Uh, you could also in theory make it still shorter, that it would be only five milliseconds. And that's really so short that, that you wouldn't notice. It's just to, um, to keep the sound clean and um, to manage the polyphony. And so the but last one is the velocity, which is actually the most simple one because Open Music just plays back velocity um, in a MIDI understandable way. And then finally, it is the first part of the MIDI note, um, which is then divided by 100 to have a, a MIDI note within the 0, 127 range. And that actually goes to, um, that goes to a make note object, which constructs the note and that all is played out. And so I will close this and I will close contact. And so here, just to give you an idea, I set up a tremolo sul ponticello for the cello and just a ordinario senso vibrato for the clarinet. And so I choose MIDI here as a MIDI playback. And normally, um, if all goes well, this is a bit exciting, you will hear the playback. Yeah, voila. Um, and so let me quickly mute the shadow one second. So we can only hear the clarinet. So you see that actually I just made microtonal steps, um, very small steps. And you can actually hear the note raising with a little detail that this note actually is not still a higher bend of the previous note of the Re or the D, but is already already taking the higher chromatic note, the D sharp, and pitch bending down a little bit. And I've the experience that that yields a better result, a less chimp, chip monkey result um, in the playback because the lower or the the more the, the smaller the bend is, 
more close to the original timbre, the sound will uh, the the timbre will still uh, be sounding. So let me just play only the clarinet. So as you can hear, you have the very very small ranges of uh, of you have a small um, microtonal steps. So that's for MIDI. Here in the middle is something I use myself personally a lot, which is the Contembre sample library. But um, since it is already way past uh, video time uh, that I uh, that I had in my in mind, I will skip this a little bit since very little people already use this uh, sample library. I can only say go check out the website um, Contembre musical uh, or contemporary sample library, I think. It's made by Thomas Hummel, um, the chief sound engineer of uh, German contemporary music ensemble and a very nice composer himself. And it works wonderful. It's actually more or less the same as the exam example uh, library, but in a certain way, um, more still more um, geared towards um, really contemporary music uh, with extended techniques, with a lot of uh, options there, with full microtonal capabilities and uh, a very, very good um, dynamic uh, implementation of crescendo, real life crescendo and decrescendo. So um, go check it out. Also there, if you want more information, you can find me on the Open Music Facebook group and I'm happy to share some stuff. Um, so last but not least, I also implemented a sine wave or well, a fundamental wave player, which basically works in the same way as the MIDI polyphony. Only here, it's all within Max MSP itself. And so if I open the polyphonic object, you can actually see that it pretty much goes to the same steps. So first it takes the duration. Again, it goes minus a tiny amount just to keep the notes separated from each other. And then that actually triggers an ADSR. These ADSR are actually, you maybe if it's even better to change it through a line object um, but just for speed purposes I, I quickly use the ADSR so it takes the velocity it divides this um, by 127 so to end up with a um, floating point number between 0 and 1 which is actually the sustain value of the uh, amplitude envelope and so, and then it just takes the um, floating point. So it takes the MIDI output from Open Music. It uh, makes it a floating floating point number. And then you have a very nice object in MaxMSP, which says MIDI to uh, frequency, and which you, gives you then a floating point number um, to, to give a microtonal uh, MIDI amount. Uh, to ex excuse me, to give a frequency. So it, it uh, calculates from a microtonal uh, floating point MIDI number to an exact uh, audio frequency. And so I even still put in a little choice object so that if you want, you actually can um, change between three waveforms in order to have a little bit of musical timbre within this synthesizer playback. Yeah, so on, in standard, in default mode, it always comes back to um, sine waves, but I, sh I will show you in a second how you can also set up a triangle wave. So let's see, let's put on the sounds and cut this a little bit. And so I already implemented um, eight uh, voices with a voice number message onto the poly, you could also still make this bigger. You could, in theory, go uh, as high as your CPU from your computer uh, can uh, manage. But for now, usually, at least for me, eight uh, does the job fine. So let's now put it on simple synth. And let's see, 
I don't know if it will play back. I hope so. If not, maybe we still need to set up um, a uh, message, but I think in this case already at least a sign wave will play. Let's have a look. Yes. So it's a little larger still. Okay. So now for just in case that I would want this low note with another timbre, I go to channel number two, so to instance, polyphonic instance number two. And let's say here I want a triangle wave. Okay. So I will play it back. And normally you should hear now the lower notes on MIDI channel two play back with a triangle wave. Okay. And still the upper line is going in sine waves. Yeah, so I guess that's it. Um, well, so I think Alan will post this patch in the either in the YouTube uh, description of the uh, meeting of the video of the meeting or um, in the Facebook Open Music group. Anyway, otherwise, um, you can find me there and I um, can send it to you uh, with no problem. So thank you for watching. Um, thank you for your time, which was longer than five minutes. I'm sorry, but I just wanted to have a little bit of a trough explanation so you know what's happening. And so maybe if you know Max a little bit better, then um, obviously you could expand the system uh, much larger. You could set up uh, templates or stuff more geared towards your personal uh, composition practice. Anyway, thank you and um, see you maybe in the next uh, Zoom meeting. Ciao. Antonio was, uh, and I were talking just before um, about, I mostly work with Sibelius, so I'm going to, talk a little bit about my my process about how i get notes from open music to sibelius um antonio is telling me about his using finale um so i'm gonna pass it off to antonio to kind of talk about his approach now to passing uh from open music to finale Okay, so hi everybody. <laughs> it's a pleasure to be here. I must uh, say that, uh, well, my approach is very rather crude. Uh, it's a very plain uh, and simple uh, approach. W one of my first problems was um, the uh, communication, um, uh, especially uh, recently, the changings in uh, operating systems uh, did not uh, allow me to use uh, very well uh, open music. Um, what I mean, uh, it's uh, in a twofold um, uh, way. Uh, on one hand, um, I needed to relink open music to, uh, to hear what I produce in a very simple way. I don't use... Uh, um, uh, well, if I need, I use it in another way, but um, uh, the first thing I have to do, it was a little max patch to, to, to hear the MIDI sounding from open music, which is a recent problem. So um, I, I can, maybe I can share my, my video, uh, my, my screen. Oh, uh, can I, Alain, can I oh, share have I, not set, have I not set it to... Uh, uh, okay. Let me just put this here. Let me see if I can. Um, okay. Sorry, I needed to. I needed to set it to all participants. I think that's used now. Uh, even if you want, I think you can go in my uh, video and uh, in the participants window and put there the um, the uh, the possibility of sharing screen. I think. I, th I think I said it for all, but maybe I'm... Oh, no, it's okay. Okay. It's, yeah, 
think okay. it's there. It's there. Okay. So um, let me see. Uh, okay. So now I think you are, you are looking to my uh, environments. Okay. I had here um, just to show you a, a, a brief way of uh, using uh, how I, I, I normally use all this stuff. Uh, what you see here, it's a, a, a simple um, uh, Max patch. I can share it. Um, well, it, uh, it uses the, the link between um, uh, uh, the link between uh, open music uh, through um, Yak, bu bu uh, Yak buses. So it's it's quite simple. It's uh, well <laughs> a little bit work uh, digging and putting tables with the, the names of all um, uh, general MIDI uh, sounds, but it works well. Uh, it's not a, it's not a, nevertheless it's not a, a, a micro uh, um, uh, microtone um, uh, patch, but it it works. It's uh, very very straightforward. So uh, if you want, I can share it. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's at least perfect. You, you don't have, you don't need to do, to do it again. Well, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, uh, okay. So um, w one of the my ways of uh, working is to move around with files and not uh, um, polarizing on software. And if it's a, it's a, if if it's a instrumental uh, or mixed music uh, composition, I um, tend to uh, well finish it more or less in finale. Uh, otherwise, it can be in Pro Tools or Reaper or something uh, like that. But just to show you, and normally um, I use. Uh, uh, because I maybe because I was a very early user of open music, um, I never exploited correctly uh, things. That's one of the the main interests in these uh, sessions to to digging around. Uh, um, because I moved to other uh, software to do what uh, I need. Things that maybe nowadays uh, open music do it very well. So. But, well, so, uh, for example, one of the uses I have uh, uh, shown was the use of this uh, patch, the Glossa figures, that uh, you can find it in my um, uh, GitHub um, uh, site. Um, you'll see that, as I have explained it, you can, uh, you have uh, two kinds of uh, uh, files. These, the, these files that I'm clicking now, these, uh, the, all these ones, uh, uh, it, it's linking uh, files, uh, files that are linked to uh, each other. This one uh, that says help all, um, it has all uh, patches as abstractions inside. It was a way to preserve things if you, you could not link or link things uh, in your patches. So I'm using this one. Um, this this patch uh, uses a kind of um, uh, use, uses uh, the uh, one idea, which is uh, the idea of using. Um, uh, let me see if I can show you. I think. I can show you, um, sorry, uh, just uh, let me see if I have here. I just wanted to show you the, 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 the notes, uh, sorry, where is it? Uh, I think it's here, okay. Um, I have here a kind of, uh, a very quick presentation. Um, okay. um, I think it's in French, but uh, I, I just want you to, to see the. Uh, I, I have the. Well, what? It opens or it doesn't open? Sorry, it's. Uh, ah, oh, yes. I know what's happening. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm not to worry. What's happening is that uh, that's the max you the Mac use of. Uh, uh, iClouds and sometimes, well, 
No, there is yes. the sink. You okay. have to download it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, um, well, I think you are seeing here my uh, my the um, the slides. No. Yeah. Yeah. I yes. Yeah. Okay. No. Well, uh, I just wanted to jump to this. Uh, it's this one. Okay. Sorry. Um, it's this one. I mean, um, uh, the principle is to use the, the idea of Glosa, okay, uh, on that patch. Uh, Glosa, it's a kind of, sorry, now it's... Uh, oh, it's I a presentation. Missed, <laughs> <laughs> I missed the, 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 it's on the other side, so I, I will stay on the slide, it's not important. Yeah. Uh, uh, now, uh, so the idea is that uh, you have here. I don't know if you see here two notes, two little notes. I, I think you see my my mouse. Yeah. Yes, and uh, here you have many ways to fill in those notes. That's the main technique. It's a kind of uh, improvisation, very stylized, uh, coded. So, um, and there is also the. Um, the, uh, this technique, it's uh, what you use to, to, to prolong uh, notes uh, through trills, uh, repetition of notes, and things like that. Um, also, this technique is used in another way uh, by composer Michael Jarrell, uh, the technique he calls gel. That's to uh, fill in with notes uh, inside uh, uh, notes. Well, it's very common use in composition. And a class is from Penderecki is also a central section. We will see that it's uh, uh, um, uh, ornamented with, uh, uh, well, the, the, this kind uh, of thing. So what does the, the patch uh, does? You, can, you take uh, two, um, two, two melodic uh, cells and it starts to, as you can see, uh, sorry, um, here, the you can, uh, uh, between two notes, it tries to see how uh, uh, inversions, uh, excerpts, uh, little time of uh, pieces can uh, fill in and ways of filling the gaps between uh, two notes uh, through the other uh, note. I don't know if it's very clear, but for example, you have an example. This is an example. Um, you have a motif A, a motif B, mm -hmm. and you have between notes from motif A, you have slices, uh, transposed, inverted, retrograde, and, uh, uh, and selections of motif B uh, uh, put between the notes. So this is the, the, the idea. What, what is interesting here, it's not, well, the technique in, so, uh, returning to the patch, we have here the, the, the patch. You have the two motifs between uh, notes, and it uh, treats them uh, well as, a, uh, as a, a, a MIDI. And then what you can, uh, what it does, it's a kind of little clusters, as you see. Mm -hmm. But these clusters are, are not to be used like this. Well, I don't know. They, they sound like this. It's yeah. very strange. Uh, well, it's not so strange. You can use it, of course. You can do what you, you, what you want. But um, the idea is not to use like them. Uh, as you can see by channel, they are uh, uh, the, the, in the, I'm using all, almost all the channels. And the idea is that I, either I could use it um, to save it uh, as a MIDI file, uh, for example, this one. Um, now I think I can use, uh, well, MIDI out MIDI. Okay, I will put it test Glosa. Okay, just just to show you. Uh, Always a good, that's a good uh, title for, uh, <laughs> for something <laughs> while you're working. Yeah. And my, my test, test one, test A. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and now I think I will put, uh, well, here it is. I will uh, drag it into my, uh, I don't know if it is solved, but, but I had some problems of the generation of files outside the output um, output mm -hmm. uh, uh, folder from open music. So now this, this, uh, this file, I can open it um, with Finale, as you see. So I normally um, I use, uh, 
well, I, I'm not going to do many, um, just, just you to see what, what happens. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so now, you, as you can see, it's a, it's a, a kind of, a, a, well, not very interesting score because it's not a score. Mm -hmm. It is a table. Okay. Um, and so um, this is a kind of user I do just to generate. Um, I, I, I don't like the, the, the Boulezian term, the pre-compositional material. This is already in composition. I, I'm starting to choose, to make, to, to test, to, 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 to work with material, you, you see. But, uh, but I can uh, understand that this is, um, uh, well, prior to start uh, this arranging and disposing uh, notes uh, in a score in that traditional sense. So this is my uh, uh, normal use of, uh, of uh, uh, the, the, the communication uh, to finale. I, I had some uh, patches I'm going to interrupt. Uh, I, I have some pa uh, patches I think I used uh, with, um, uh, uh, with uh, 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 C sounds. Mm -hmm. Also, using the objects to generate scores for C sound, which was very interesting because it allowed me to generate simultaneously MIDI scores to drive C sound instruments, but also actual uh, C sound scores uh, in other ways and parameters I would uh, I would need. So, um, uh, th th this is in this idea of uh, using software. Uh, as notes and um, uh, files uh, circulate through them uh, until I get a composition. So <laughs> I, I don't know if there is something that uh, was not very clear or um, I can share also the patch, the max patch um, from the, uh, maybe it will be <laughs> useful because it's very, it's very simple and, and it's very light. So um, it says you. Yeah, wish. I think that's that'd be great. I mean, the max patches that um, just has kind of sent me a, a couple of patches as well. I'm just going to kind of put everything um, like I did last time in sort of a session five folder, and then people can download and and play mm -hmm. and alter, you know, play about and sort of experiment. Um, and you know, break the patches that, we <laughs> that are uploaded. Yes. Um, that's. Uh, do you have any um, any patches to kind of show between C sound or have you? Is that, is that all? Uh, I had it in a, in a, uh, in a uh, earlier version. Um, I don't know if I. Um, no, it was prior to these uh, uh, old uh, what, versions. Yeah. Uh, yes, but uh, I, I am in the old. Um, in fact, it was quite. Uh, 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 the idea was. Uh, sorry, I'm just looking. Um, no. But uh, if you, if you, um, uh, let me see. So, <laughs> sorry. Um, I you don't. don't, you don't oh, like yes. It. Yes. Um, uh, well, I, I just start to to reuse. Um, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I can uh, show you um, in this. Um, yes, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> well, uh, I'm just start to to reuse. I, I, I think you are seeing this. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, you, you start to use some objects uh, just to to see if you, how it uh, how it would work, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, I didn't remember. <laughs> I used uh, yeah. these objects, uh, I think, mainly in uh, early two thousand, and um, I had some patches that would make the link between um, uh, open music and C sound. Uh, I mean, pre prepared patches. You, you only need to use the, for example, the same uh, output from a chord uh, sequence, and it would change it to frequency and uh, all those, uh, the, the stuff of, um, 
uh, instruments because this this object I'm showing to you uh, in this moment I think it's, it's the important one of the core objects in uh, C sound uh, the make object sound it it it, it's, it makes lines um, it can uh, make make lines. Uh, in the for in the, this uh, the format of uh, the in the C sound uh, format uh, statement, okay. So, I mean number of instruments, attack time, durations, and uh, everything in, in the C sound style, okay. Mm -hmm. So that's um, but I can <laughs> uh, look around and see uh, what I have got from other uh, patches. So. Yeah, I've I've never used C sound. It's something I've kind of I've, I've read about, but it's um, um, I just need to to get. I think I just need to dive in and uh, start experimenting because it's yes. yeah. It's, Maybe I'm too old, but I still like very much C sound for uh, some kinds of sound generation. It's uh, it's uh, rather um, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Because and, and very flexible. Of course, it's. Uh, I think it's not very easy uh, when you are not acquainted with um, the that uh, uh, programming style of writing uh, uh, lines, uh, code lines. You know. Um, yeah. And you must describe precisely what what you want. It's uh, very dull at that <laughs> in that sense, but. Uh, it's it's uh, really amazing, and uh, you can, uh, and I think it's a very good tool to understand exactly what it's going on in sound. If you want to, uh, I mean, yeah, I've heard. I mean, uh, I know Super Collider is another uh, one that I've, I've, you know, it's it's very yes. similar, isn't it? Well, and it's that's kind of, um, you know, real coding and. Sort of uh, shaping the sound, um, and I think there is um, a bit of compatibility between OM and Super Collider. Am I am I wrong? Uh, maybe no, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, on I'm the other sure. end, yes, I I'm, um, I know a little bit of Super Collider, and it's quite powerful also. It's, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, in the, in the moment, even the sound quality was also very uh, very good. Uh, yeah. And uh, I used also with a colleague of mine um, through the Matt Ingalls uh, C sound object using C sound inside Max. Yeah. But, uh, uh, some portions could be, and some techniques could be uh, more efficient using the that uh, uh, that way uh, so uh, using max to generate a, a c sound uh, score and then uh, feeding it into directly into that object uh, because the quantity of objects in max you need to uh, make a, 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 a i mean a, 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 uh, model, uh, frequency modulation uh, module or something mm -hmm. like that and then you have a line in C sound it, it's okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um, now yeah, we have also too. Faust uh, which is uh, very uh, powerful also I don't know if you know it from I Grammy don't. Uh, yes it's a um, it's a language uh, high level uh, language that allows you to describe some processes and then you just ask to compile. You have an online compiler. You don't need to even have the uh, files oh, in wow. your machine. Uh, so uh, and then you you just compile uh, th your process in the way you want. You, if you want a, a C sound object, it's okay. If you want a Max object, mm -hmm. it's okay. If you want a pure data object or uh, something else. Uh, it's okay. It generates the uh, high efficient code. Uh, the, the, you can. That's um, very interesting. Yes, I can. Uh, sorry, I, I will put uh, there the. Um, uh, yes, it's well. Uh, it's this. It's uh, it's quite interesting. Um, well, <laughs> I put there the the link. 
the chat. Yeah, I'll I'll link that um, in the in the description. You know, I put I put any yes. kind of resources or things that we talk about. So I'll definitely put that in um, and check that out myself. It's interesting. I think that's you know there, there's a real kind of uh, good kind of connectivity sort of between open music, Max, and you know C sound and all these other things. Um, mm. I think that. It maybe brings uh, brings on to my um, the way I use yes. um, uh, open music is possibly a little bit more um, traditional in that I kind of go into sorry I was playing a bite a lot with before <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we've got a lot of a lot of nonsense done here um, but the 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 main thing that I use is because um, I obviously it's a bit the I do a lot of the um, sort of uh, musical shaping and things. I mean, I find the let me bring up. Um, I just you know the you know the the playback very often um, in open music is not you know, it's 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 all right <laughs> but um <laughs> you know the uh um i've recently started using the the rudp player um the um i think it was a conversation that came up in the uh in the facebook group uh, manu garcia wrote a kind of uh about trying to get our UDP player working in um, uh, in Windows, and um, Charles Nemog um, was kind enough to kind of send around the um, the Fluid Synth uh, okay. <laughs> um, ex um, patch that uh, that gets it working really. <laughs> uh, I think it works fine in 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 uh, 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 Microsoft and um, and Apple, but um, for whatever reason, um, the in Windows it's uh, you know the forgotten stepchild of <laughs> <laughs> uh, of uh, Open Music. So um, it's meant that now I'm able to um, whenever I um, you know as you say whenever you're trying to uh, get some sound out, changing the channel. Um, I mean, for, for maybe I'll, I'll maybe explain just for some people who don't know, I don't know, sort of the level's kind of all over the place with, um, with these videos, but um, whenever uh, your MIDI, your computer sends sort of the MIDI can send it to different channels and your, um, when we talk about the, the channels, it's, um, we can sort of see here on my example, we've got channels <coughs> all the way up to 20. Mm -hmm. um, and that will pretty much decide the, so the type of sound that gets played back. So if I just... I, mean, I just kind of, I, I just randomly picked up righteous clapping music to kind of get... <laughs> it's, I think it's a bit too slow for... <laughs> at the minute but um, it's just for uh, kind of an example um, the way you, one of the ways that I find quite easy of adjusting the you can adjust the the channels manually I think in open music by selecting them and then adjusting them accordingly here um, it's not great because um, you can only adjust it with your mouse and then the moment you reevaluate um, everything back to normal again, um, the the chord object and uh, chord sequence, uh, and I think the note object as well. And um, we open up the documentation. Yeah, you always if you look for the Chan. Um, slot that's that's more that's really where we get our our channel information from 
it's this input and it's the last. So you can see the, by default, it will always send it to channel one. Um, if we change it to, I don't know, I don't know what channels, what's on channel eight, but um, mm -hmm. we'll find out. So we can see if I go back into here, it's now gone to channel eight. Okay, it's the exact same as the other one. <laughs> um, so I changed this one to, oh no, that's uh, 12. We should, if we evaluate it again, see that we've got different uh, MIDI signs. Um, I find that a lot more uh, useful sometimes in listening back um, because obviously the default kind of signs, um, it's also not, not very, especially in Windows, it's not very microtonal. Um, whereas the mm -hmm. RUDP player will allow for a lot more microtonal. Um, so if I, if I even make, just give an example of some microtones. Uh, these are just a, a random selection of uh, intervals. So if I now, evaluate that we go in and look that the MIDI values now microtonal and if I play it back it should even it was hard to hear in the it's not microtonal at all <laughs> Hmm. Why is Zach doing that? Um, maybe if I put them against each other. Yeah, I think you can sort of hear the microtones coming out a little bit more with the context. <laughs> um, but you can sort of, your um, oh, if I change it to the Maybe all, I think 15 is the piano. That might give us a real, um, where was it I had it? Fifteen and fifteen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds a lot more microtone. <laughs> uh, so we've got a. Why has this gone very strange? Um, yeah, so we've got sort of microtonal playback. The one of the problems with moving to um, to Sibelius is that you have to go through the. Um, export as the music XML. Um, and mm -hmm. this is a very temperamental, um, oh, I've changed it there, that's why. Ooh. Oh, divide by four. Um, so really, um, the music, uh, the export, is happy with kind of if it's fairly straightforward. So if I call this one my first test and we go into um, open it with so there it is. I'll kind of complain but it will do it. <laughs> Yes, I, I had the same problem. Um, uh, yeah. For finale, you must uh, say okay, 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 and then it opens it. 
Um, yeah, I think that comes from just the way it uh, I think it's just a very old version. Um, I'll, I'll go into detail in a minute what I think is causing the issue, <laughs> some of the issues, but um, we can sort of see it's, um, you know, once it's in, then what I can normally do is, um, you know, if I want to add it in somewhere, I can just click copy and paste and it's you know, relatively painless from that side of things. If it's, if it's not a very complicated rhythm, um, the moment you start playing about with these kind of subdivisions, um, it's, it's the way um, the it's the export music XML reads the rhythm tree. So the way I think it's the way it's sort of parsing that information in it tends to you tend to get very strange results um, the moment you start playing about with this. So if I go into this one we see uh, my second test. <laughs> so we can just close that one. Open uh, second test. And this one actually didn't, this one dealt with it reasonably better because um, there's actually the built in export XML has got a had a few bugs and for whatever reason there's a file here the ex this kind of export XML uh, which is obviously from 2008, which fixes some, but not all the problems. Um, I'll be, I'll upload this into the, um, into the group resources as well. Okay. If I bring up my, so I would just um, load and select that and it'll, I already have it loaded in, but it'll, load that in and it will then mean that it will deal with some of the issues. Um, wonder if I close, in fact, I might as well just, um, I'll just close this up and um, try and load it in using the default. Uh, player so that it'll not work. <laughs> <laughs> so if we um, I'll just overwrite that my second test. I need to call my second test too to save. Well actually we'll just open So I should put, yeah. So you see the way in this example, it's just yes. interpreted the it, it's a <laughs> bit of a one. It's it's this it, it, this is kind of been ironed out for the um, if you um, so you know it's. It's basically the the open music will always sort of just uh, use the information it's given. So if we look at our rhythm tree, you can just you can see that it's the way in which the rhythm tree has been built. You know, it's telling it to group the it's to, to break up those two notes and as okay. a triplet. Um, so the way we the way you build your rhythm trees will have a massive impact in the XML file you get. Um, <clears throat> the file that I talked about 
um, if I go into wherever I have that, if I load that in and then my second test three, it'll, I mean, this is going to show me the, this file, um, but just to, to prove that I'm not lying, <laughs> that, uh, my second test three, um, you know, it will fix, um, fix some of these issues um, and give me more uh, what I want. We've kind of lost our seven, but you know, it's, this is the, the thing about building the tree. It's, it's, it's not perfect, but it's getting there. Um, it, it, um, the moment you sort of get to more complicated trees, if we go just to, you know, by nesting these substitutions, yes. we can really get some fun stuff. And at that point, really the XML becomes useless. It'll even, no matter what I do, it will, um, tr oh, well, it does try and the, um, it'll export it, but it'll not re it'll, um, the moment I try and open it, uh, where's my most recent, it just can't, um, just cannot, uh, Sibelius just can't read it. Um, I think Finale is better. Um, I've got an old terrible version of Finale. Um, if I open this, um, I think it, yes. The it, read. it will read it, but it, you'll we'll see the the problem of this um, mm. uh, this XML file that uh, it just becomes it's just the the way in which it's interpreted. Yeah, mm. you see our file gets just. Um, yes, <laughs> quite a challenge. It, it it's not a real a, issue. Yeah, yeah. it's. Yeah. I, I must say, I, I, I had a, a little strategy um, in working, mm -hmm. but that's, uh, well, it's a kind of messing around. It's not uh, really to, to solve things, but um, it's solved to me uh, from a musical point of view. I mean, uh, I, may, maybe because of the the formal training, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I, always, I always thought, uh, maybe wrongly, but uh, I always thought of uh, notation uh, not as uh, a real musical thing, but as a graphical problem. I mean, mm -hmm. when you start to use, uh, uh, when you write by hand, it's and, and written. So um, uh, the, the, the disposition, the graphic disposition, as another uh, um, impact. When you move into uh, score engraving, uh, which is what we are doing in a, yeah. a, a way, <laughs> the problems change uh, very much. And now you are, f uh, and then we are facing um, uh, graphical problems, not real musical ones. So uh, I, uh, to gain some time, and as I was thinking, uh, for example, when you have a, a, a note duration, uh, for example, um, oh, sorry, <laughs> for the, the uh, old note, for example, mm -hmm. but you know in your score that you want to have the two half notes tired because you want a crescendo uh, and then a diminuendo. And the only way it's not to, it's very, uh, it's not very uh, precise if you, if you put the one quarter, for example, uh, well, if you want mm -hmm. to make a one quarter crescendo and then uh, the crescendo or, or the, the opposite, uh, three notes uh, the crescendo, you must uh, break the, the whole note. And so, uh, uh, bearing this in mind, uh, for example, I normally the, the material from open music, I would run it through um, uh, through MIDI uh, normally, mm -hmm. 
and uh, passing through um, a sequencer like, uh, for example, a digital performer or something. Mm -hmm. just to rearrange bars and things that I want to hide in the final version. Mm -hmm. For example, if you want to make a score with no bars, for example, but you must rearrange uh, things, I would do a kind of uh, uh, intermezzo work mm -hmm. um, and, then, and, and only then making the final exports uh, to finale. Yeah. Uh, already with um, with the uh, with the tracks uh, arranged the the the, the bars uh, correctly, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, put um, because I found that uh, uh, it uh, I tends to um, uh, lose time, uh, not 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 the creative time you know, but to to solve a problem and not to. Yeah. deal with the musical, a real musical problem. I mean, how uh, will I do the, 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 the bar? How must I, uh, if I want to make something that uh, mm -hmm. looks, looks more freer, yeah. that not sounds, but looks, <laughs> you know, uh, where I'm going to put the, the bar that I will hide in, yeah. in, in finale, you know, just to the, uh, give you the visual idea that music flows, you know. So, uh, <laughs> I must uh, confess that uh, <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's definitely, you know, it, you're definitely touching on there's, you know, the, to, you know, the, the use of different software, I think is very important. I think, you know, the, um, it's the using the right tool for the right job, really, you know, yes. the, I mean, even for me, the, um, getting stuff in you know we from here um you know it's we can add things that are very musical which just aren't really possible like a simple slur <laughs> yes. and add that in open music um you know as you say like crescendos um dynamics you know these these are things that um, engraving software can do very well uh, yes and just articulations um, are something that, you know, I find I've, you know, I think about what do I need the software to do? You know, the, the max playback is, you know, it's, a, it's, it's great for giving me a, a, a better sense of the piece, you know, I think. Um, yes, yes, of course. But obviously, but, you know, for me, um, you know, it's like the score is always the roadmap to the piece. It's not the, it's not the music. Um, you know, you want, to, obviously while you're writing, the, the sort of the closer you can get to that, you can make better informed decisions. Um, but um, it's a, the engraving is a much more, you know, I'm now putting the, uh, the roadmap to gather the directions for the performer to then interpret yes. to the piece. And obviously these musical, dis you know, these, the decisions of what you put in and the, and, and the detail um, for me, even, you know, Sibelius is, is not a good, it's a good engraving software. I mean, for, I think my problems with, engraving software or with all engraving software, <laughs> yes. you know, Finale, the Dorico, um, Sibelius, the, yes. um, they're great. They're really good at what they do. But I think for composers, um, they can be very limiting, as you say, you know, in order to kind of do the more uh, complex or the more, um, it's like uh, just something a bit more interesting or a bit more contemporary. Because I think that's one of the issues is that um, yes, I don't the, want to talk about that at all. Um, the, this was another issue, getting stuff from copying and pasting does not always work. Um, I think it's 
Um, Gosh, I don't know how I'm going to solve that. Um, I'll go to one that worked. Uh, the um, the building is only part of it. If I get, I'll just take this crotch. Um, or if I open, oh, that's new. Uh, open. Was it with my test? My test was that when it worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so if I and that was the, that was the one I had the problems with. Yeah. It was if I open two, we get. I mean, it's not a, not a good file, but it, it'll do for the purposes of what I want to explain. Um, the moment I, I should turn off the, I'm sorry, you're going to hear some terrible MIDI. Maybe I'll try and avoid that. Um, if one of the things that I do to kind of get around this issue is, you know, just as, as I'm happy enough to go out of open music to deal with um, to deal with uh, the, the the note the the ins, um, the more engraving issues um, I'll also um, go to Adobe Illustrator to allow me to experiment okay. even more. Um, and even I think um, you can see that you can really kind of see my little workflow of uh, notation down at the bottom of my screen because they, they sort of sit by side by side. Got open music, Sibelius and Illustrator. Okay. <laughs> um, there are, you know, lots of free um, uh, like Enscape um, is another uh, vector graphics editor, which is what this is. Um, the if I open my file from uh, where XML can get me from Open Music to. Um, to Sibelius, uh, I find mm. the the PDF is. Oh, sorry, I pressed the wrong button there. The the PDF can get me to to what I want to do in uh, in this. So once I'm in here, um, it allows me a greater level of freedom to delete little aspects of the score if I really <laughs> wanted to um, almost take on a more kind of visual um, aspect. So I could, for instance, uh, if it can rearrange all elements, is it in, so? In, in, in every mm -hmm. single element I can highlight and I could even move. Um, I've got this set to very small pixel. <laughs> um, let's move it at hundred. You know, so you know we can jump individual notes around. Hundred might be too much. <laughs> let's go for ten. Um, you know, so I can move things around a lot more, um, and it also sort of frees you up to. Um, to edit um, individual lines. So I could, one thing that I really love doing is just, you know, you go in and decide, well, I'm gonna have just this little section um, disappear. So our notes are gonna be a bit more abstract. And, you know, we can get, 
some more <laughs> just weird. It's really the limit is your imagination. Um, and you could even, if you've got a, like a, a, a drawing pad, which I haven't got plugged in, um, you know, we can get a lot more of the actual kind of handwritten elements in our score as well. Um, so I, I just add a layer for handwriting, which is, why is that not picking up? Yeah. Um, I don't know why I haven't got any brushes here. Um, I'll edit this down so it looks like I haven't <laughs> wasted so much time. <laughs> uh, gosh, what's there no brush? Um, that'll do. So I could, well, uh, this will be quite thick, but uh, you know, we can add these silly little lines. Um, you know, we could make that a little bit smaller so that it's maybe uh, applied all strokes. You know, so that we can Right, um, well, I don't know. Uh, hush. Something, you know, introducing these more uh, abstract or not even abstract, more graphical elements of her score. Um, so I'm combined, so I'm not just tied into just one particular. Yes. Um, mm -hmm. Notation, but for sub the I'll close this. Jumping back to open music, um, the uh, getting no uh, getting note getting this. Um, Sorry, Finale just doesn't want to, doesn't like that I've closed them. <laughs> Getting these um, more complicated uh, notes obviously brings its own issues. The, the one of the problems is, I think, if we look at, this is a file I just built mm -hmm. in open, in, uh, just in Sibelius, getting these nested triplets, um, and we can see, um, you know, we're using um, version 3.0, and the level of detail that's given in that XML file is, if I get, I think it was my in files. If I open this, you can see open music is very good about getting stuff in. So here's our Sibelius file that I made the mm -hmm. XML. And here is that then open in, um, in um, open music. So we've got um, a lot going on there, you know, it's, it can deal with that a lot better. The, the problem comes, um, this was the exact same XML file that I passed into open music and then asked open music to then export it again. So you can okay. see the really, I've, I've, I've given open music an XML file and asked it to make an XML file. And you can see, even though we've got the same information, because of the way Open Music deals with it, we've got a very different interpretation. And if I sort of play, put those side by side, um, 
Oh, why does that not work? Mm -hmm. There. We can see. Oh, yes. Even though they're exactly the same, it's just the way in which this one's from Open Music and this one is from Sibelius. It's just the way the XML f file is passed in and information that is passed to it um, has have big sort of consequences. And it's there's no real kind of perfect fix for that. Open Music can just sort of does what it's given. So you've just, if you've exported to open music and it's sure it's the same with finale you know the, the reason we get think so yes the uh, reason uh, we get these error message i mean even if i this is a a text editor which allows me to really kind of dip in to the file so if we look at um This one, this is what has come out of Open Music, and this is what came out of Sibelius. It's just it's a lot of very, there's a lot more detail, obviously, in the first, in the setting up of what Sibelius is doing, the thicknesses, um, fonts, etc. cetera. Um, to, I think it's also to okay. do uh, with Open Music's uh, a little bit stuck in the past we're using uh sort of parts using sort of music xml 1.1 and we're now in <laughs> music xml 3.0 um, okay. <laughs> okay you know i think it just needs a little bit of an update i think that's where a lot of these errors and things come from um but it's your uh the actual notes and things uh, the rhythm tree gets decided what duration and what value these are given. So that's why that information is very important. Um, sort of an, if you're trying to work out why um, these things aren't working. Um, and this is also probably the reason why the, whenever I tried to open in finale that, um, that file, that was just, um, it just went wrong um, it's because it just the way open music yes. is building these xml files yes. um is just not as compatible um and i think that's just an, an issue with open music they it needs the the export mxml um it's just in need of updating and um i think the I, I don't think it's a massive fix. I think it just needs a bit of work. Uh, I know. Uh, yes, who, I think so. Especially, I, with, so. Uh, I, I have a friend who does a lot passes uh, from Open Music to Lily Pond, and he had to write his own um, export uh, XML file to to deal with that. And I think, um, I think it's that's just the. The nature of the beast. I think it's just um, the XML music XML is a is a problematic uh, object, um, and I think you just um, need to be aware of the issues <laughs> that come with it. You know, I think um, some people might, you know, be trying to move stuff from Open Music to um, Finale or Sibelius, and think it's their fault that it's not working. You know, if you're, yes. it's very easy to think that you've done something wrong where it's, it's not the case. They, <laughs> there is a, there's just a, there's a bug in, um, in the code and uh, it just need, it's something that needs uh, to be addressed. Yes. Um, um, that's, that's why uh, I had that problem with the finale. Um, I don't have here now uh, an example, but uh, uh, trying to open an XML file, it's uh, the same, uh, but more uh, times, I mean, uh, it would say to me, oh, I have this problem, oh, this is wrong, this is wrong, this is wrong, and then it would open mm -hmm. the, the file, but, uh, well, 
And I, 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 I must say that in, in regarding what I was uh, uh, saying some uh, moments ago, I can show you just a little example. It's mm, not a, um, a very, uh, maybe two, uh, two examples to, to show you. For example, um, in this kind of uh, writing, uh, I mean, this is an old piece for two pianos and I have made mm -hmm. um, the, the idea is that there are many um, uh, music is, uh, the elements are going to encounter each other. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, you have no bar lines and things like that. Of course, this, this is in finale. Mm -hmm. And um, you will, and, and of course, uh, there are bar lines behind, you know. But the, all the preparation was uh, for this version, not the original one. The original one, mm -hmm. I made it by hand. <laughs> but uh, um, th this was the idea, because as you see, there are many repeated elements. The idea of the, uh, grabbing those elements in open music, recreating them, and then uh, sending them offsets to recreate all the music, or at least most of it, in a... Um, in a, in a, um, in in a maquette uh, later translated to a, a, a poly object, uh, and so or uh, I mean a chord sequence object that I could later uh, well break and see in in uh, in a digital performer to finally uh, translate it into finale. So I would not need to write all those notes. Um, mm. It's just to uh, adjust them and I could adjust yeah. them prior in open music and then in, uh, in finale. So this was the, um, the, the, the idea of uh, uh, using, uh, in this case, uh, finale just to to uh, and through open music to to do that for example this uh, sorry i think this example it's more uh, simpler uh, and and uh, uh, and shows what i was telling about hiding or not hiding some as you see in this piece apparently you you only have uh, the the bar lines have the function of ancient bar lines is just to to give you a guide you know yeah so uh, they, they they allow you to understand more or less the coordination between clarinet and piano mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless i had to put all the music and then to decide well now i need this bar line this or that that's there why there that's that's not an indication of a measure because mm -hmm. measures are only here just to coordinate and you don't need to know if it's a four or three four or something like yeah. that uh, and the decision of coordination and how uh, uh, the value of the notes as, as you can see uh, here in the upper part uh, for example this this would be a only one note in mm -hmm. In, um, in in open music or, mm -hmm. or something like that, but I've broke it in order to show exactly what you want to do uh, yeah. and also to 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 get the precision you want with the the the, the, the material. Of it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it's uh, at sight. It's quite simple, but what is in uh, the problem? It's not the the, the the notes it's the uh, or to play the notes it's the sound you want to generate so yeah um, that's that's why I, I prefer in this case to to make a free parts work uh, generating all the note material uh, with uh, open music syncing in a compositional I would say note uh, way. Mm -hmm. uh, then start to think of a kind of intermixed <laughs> in the sequencer to uh, start to think how a musician would look at that and think it's very easy to play because that's mm -hmm. the idea. <laughs> I say normally that I have a very tricky and very nasty uh, trick. Um, I try to, to write uh, apparently very simple 
where, and then when you look at the metronome, you say, <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, but the idea is that the first impact in the musician, it's, it's to say, oh, I could play this like Haydn, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's quite simple. And then you start to work and it's too late to notice that problem starts to, to appear and not the kind of, well, that's a personal decision, of course. Mm -hmm. We have not the kind of idea that I want that he, he sees that I'm very complex. Uh, well, I don't give a damn. I want him to play very comfortable the, the music that's there. And so uh, I need that he, he must be very aware of the quality of the sound, the, the way uh, he, he, uh, he communicates with others. Because I, I remember when I, uh, um, well, when uh, I have my t t early 20s, uh, 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 talking to a guitar player, uh, I myself played the guitar before the piano, and uh, um, he was telling me a thing that marked me very much, that he was telling me, you know, um, uh, arrangers, uh, they make the arrangements uh, that when you go to studio, you are uh, always stuck and trying to read uh, uh, a score and that's not very interesting because uh, uh, we don't have the time to, to, to uh, memorize the score, uh, uh, to start to, to, to work the sound. No, we just play notes to, just to show that it's very uh, well complicated or something because the studio session, I'm talking about commercial music more. Uh, uh, because the studio session is running and uh, the producer doesn't have the money, so two times and it's done. And, um, and uh, I think this remark was very interesting for me, the idea that uh, you, you must do uh, uh, a kind of work with the musician, even if you don't have t uh, much time, mm -hmm. uh, to allow him to um, take control over the score. Uh, and so, the, that's why the way, the way I sometimes I write music is, I think, apparently uh, very straightforward. Apparently, it poses no problems at all, technical. Mm -hmm. Well, and then sometimes they appear. <laughs> yeah. Even, even <laughs> uh, or because something is very uh, in a, uh, I demand a level. Uh, um, that it's uh, quite impossible in that pitch area or something like that or to attack a note very pianissimo but it's quite impossible you know the little things yeah. that can happen but but at that time uh, normally the musician has the time to to go uh, there that's why I, I like to do this in this uh, free step to um, uh, say cleaning the the, the notes to think what uh, a musician will see and how it will impact him to play. Uh, of course, it's, the, it's the, uh, uh, in, in electroacoustic pure music, acousmatic music, issues are different, but... Uh, yeah, no, I think it's, it, it, you've said a lot of things that I um, completely agree <laughs> with. I mean, for me, it's, um, the act of uh, sort of the, the craft of notation is almost a level of psychology. By doing something a certain way, it will have all these kind of repercussion, aesthetic repercussions, uh, political repercussions, uh, <laughs> you know, all these um, things. And it's, it's interesting. I mean, I've been experimenting quite a bit and um, I think you know, studying sort of lucky enough to sort of do a PhD in composition kind of give gives you a kind of unlicensed freedom to kind of take these experiments and and run with it. <laughs> um, and it's um, it's in, it's really interesting just how the notation has such a huge just the these decisions and the way in which you present um, a musical idea. I mean, you know, um, just to the two most extreme examples. Um, let me see if I can actually um, find a two of the most extreme examples of scores that I um, did. 
Uh, da, da, da. And where's the other one? Um, I'll share. Share my screen, and you can see. Um, so for me, oh, this is the thing with a, this this chat <laughs> is up at the top corner, and it's hard to see. <laughs> um, is it this one that I did? It's not that one. Um, version two point oh. The notation that I did for this, um, you know, I chose sort of durational, these, you know, to try and um, the, these um, notes were ending up looking very like nested tuplets and, you know, even though this is the, because one of the good things I, I don't give notation engraving software a lot of uh, positives, but one of the really good thing is the spacing of notes. Yes. You know, the kind of this kind of uh, temporal spacing that you can that that is that's really what they do very very well. Um, and even though these were nested tuplets and things, um, because um, I was able to kind of work, get the tempo and how long these things were lasting you're able to kind of hide by just changing the, the type of notation. Um, I was really interested in experimenting with that. The, I have to go in, a, a, re, a more recent com, uh, piece that I did, I need to find the actual score. Maybe I should, I think I had it. Um, on my website, I think I uploaded the file. Um, but this, um, I, I, I tried experimenting with both the very, this kind of hiding the complexity and then putting the, the complexity in uh, up front. Um, And it was in, yeah, um, in this piece, okay. I, oh, I should probably try and find it on my laptop, but I, very much leaned into the the complexity of it um and i think you, uh, towards the end it gets uh, i really kind of annoyed the performers <laughs> uh, <laughs> with the uh yeah i think i this is actually an older version i think i actually have a I, I have a nicer version i think uh i think it was this one um that uh, no, it doesn't want to go. Um, you know, I, I sort of leaned into the complexity yeah. of it, um, but there's still, um, you know, this, these nested tuplets and kind of, because I then, um, I, it had its own problems um, that had to be dealt with and how to notate these things, you know, how to make sure that the performers knew what things lined up and, and what yeah. didn't. Um, it's, it's in. It's, it was a. It was an interesting um, ex experience, kind of having, you know, 
working with performers and giving them one piece and then another performer and giving them a very different type of piece and just the the psychology and the and the results that kind of came about because of those decisions um and i think it's i think it's fun to experiment and try <laughs> <laughs> yes. i don't know about I, I i i think it's um you know i think it's they've all got their own pluses and minuses um and i think it's trying to work out what will best serve the piece that you're writing um but then i think it's <laughs> it's it's always uh it's always a balancing act but yes and it's quite um uh, impressive so things uh, when, when you put them into practice uh by um uh, well uh, <laughs> I, I, I am always surprised because even when I say, well, that's what I list inside, mm -hmm. but now it's there. <laughs> and there is the sound impact uh, itself, uh, physical, it's uh, different from the uh, mental sound waves, <laughs> I would say so. It's quite strange. Uh, and, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and always challenging, uh, always challenging. Uh, for uh, uh, a colleague of mine once uh, asked me um, if I uh, did, uh, 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 I, I was doing, uh, I uh, write at the piano or uh, on the desk and, uh, uh, because, and because of that piece I've showed for two pianos, um, I told him, you know, I improvise on the desk and I theorize at the piano. Because, for example, in that piece, as you have um, the the pedals down, um, I had to 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 chrono make chronometration about sound durations, to in order to guarantee that in whatever piano you play it, the sound stays and intermingles with the sound that makes uh, with the other. So it's quite a surprise. I mean, if you make it with a um, um, uh, MED player or sing, you don't hear half of the piece at least <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because the sound itself uh, uh, and is moving uh, how it's moving in the in the, in the in the room it uh, it will also and in the instrument of course and resonances will uh, oh yeah play its I role mean, also even the even just going i mean the most extreme example i had with that was i was working on a piece with uh, electronics and you know i had the my headphones and i was do you know making all the changes into what i was hearing and then when it was performed it was in a very different room with you know these old speakers and there was no uh high frequencies all the, all the high frequencies that were my headphones, all of a sudden in this new setup, gone. And I was like, yeah, it's totally, you know, it's a learning experience. <laughs> yes. And you, you're very often at the mercy of uh, the, the acoustics and the equipment that are in the venue. Yeah. I think it's, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, I think it's with the preludes that Debussy, after hearing the first rehearsal, uh, changed a lot in the score, uh, <laughs> so it's uh, 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 this is the interesting part. It's always in um, uh, uh, going and and, and coming, um, and and I think it's very. Um, uh, uh, for example, <clears throat> I don't rely very much on the even if I, I if I. Uh, Knowledge and sometimes I use them, the, uh, some MIDI instruments, even uh, when I make electronic things and um, some things like the, uh, that. Um, one of the, the problems I felt it's that the, it's a kind of a, a strange effect. The closer they came to, to actual uh, instruments, I would prefer, uh, well, uh, 
electromechanical instruments. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like the idea of virtual instruments. Uh, they, they are digital instruments because they are not virtual. They are quite real. They are there. <laughs> but um, <laughs> um, the closer they came, uh, sometimes there is the, that little gap that makes them sound uh, sometimes quite uh, uh, odd when, when you compare the same score with uh, played by re uh, not real well by <laughs> yeah electromechanical <laughs> or mechanical instruments you know with uh, performers and uh, uh, things uh, like that it, um, it's uh, kind of so all, always surprising so <laughs> yeah i mean it's one of the things that i've um, been thinking about because now um i'm able to l use the kind of the the max uh, rudb player um, and it does sound so much nicer <laughs> and much more. Yeah. And you're able to get all these microtones now. Um, I'm ge I'm sort of getting a level of kind of almost perfection that it's never gonna be. It's 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 never gonna be achieved in a performance. Um, I mean, I don't know many performers who could you know hit micro, especially with microtonal stuff. Just yes out of nowhere <laughs> um, at high speed, you know, you can really kind of do th things that are superhuman um, and how that might influence me when I'm writing and maybe, mm -hmm. maybe in a negative, it might push me in a way that's not um, helpful. And yes. especially, you know, you, the point is to work with other people um, and if you hand them scores that are just, um, just beyond <laughs> impossible <laughs> uh you know i think having the odd impossible note is perfect is okay but <laughs> i think when you get to like 20 or 30 impossible notes i think you have to start rethinking <laughs> what you're doing. of course it's, it's okay <laughs> okay so uh, you are going to put the, the that video the yeah. 20 minute video you are going to insert it in yeah. the okay. i'm gonna i'm gonna add i've got um software i'm gonna splice it in towards the start so just will um introduce max and he go he goes into the pa into the uh building it and what you know what you have to do to root it to make sure that it all comes through yes. um okay, i think we've, yeah i think we've covered um covered everything really that we it would be nice to get someone who could maybe uh I'll maybe for another time i'll write into the group and see if we can get a couple of composers who use Super Collider and CSound to maybe um, explain. Uh, okay. Um, but I think for I think we're coming yes. up on. Uh, I think um, I'm going to 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 put there. Um, maybe it can be uh, interesting because I remember now. I don't. Uh, this is the uh, MIC. It's the Musical Information Center. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I think it's the the same across Europe. I think um, th this is the the Portuguese center. Yeah. And what is interesting, it's that uh, there you can find um, uh, Portuguese composers or uh, not foreigner composers, uh, but uh, yeah. non-Portuguese composers that are in Portugal, <laughs> that live in Portugal, so yeah. Portuguese, resident Portuguese. And um, um, you can find uh, uh, for uh, many of them uh, scores, actual scores, um, because the, the most, of, most of us uh, put some, some scores uh, there. Uh, and maybe it's uh, interesting information. Uh, the, the only thing that it's needed it's that you must uh, you must uh, register, but you can download the the, mm -hmm. the scores for free. It's not uh, it's not uh, uh, mandatory. And what is interesting is that you can find some uh, interesting, uh, maybe some sometimes some interesting stuff. Um, uh, I, I want I will only mention uh, to. Um, to, to composers that have uh, uh, that are not already living, um, that's um, one of them. It's uh, Constance Cartville. She was my teacher. She was working with uh, a musical theatre um, mm -hmm. 
I, I don't mention uh, the, the the other ones because it would be in, in, yes. in just because there are uh, yeah, many stuff. and many colleagues and very interesting and uh, very different. Um, uh, I, I just was just looking for uh, Peixinho because Peixinho it's. Uh, it's, or, or it's, uh, and uh, this one. There are some scores there also from him, uh, which is um, uh, George Peixin was uh, uh, one of the, well, he's, he was very acquainted with um, Daniel Kienzi before uh, the sax player. Um, he was a friend of also uh, Donatoni, George Antunes, well, all those, that generation of composers. It was lesser known because <laughs> Portugal is less known. It was somebody that uh, uh, with a very beautiful uh, music. But uh, it's uh, maybe interesting because you can dig around. Uh, well, it's just for information. That's perfect. I mean, I will put, I'm going to link all the kind of resources that we talk about. I'll stick up the, okay. all the names and things and people can, I mean, I, I love uh, exploring different scores and sort of seeing what there mm. is. So I'm sure, you know, I'm sure yes. there's lots of other people who are. <laughs> <laughs> would be yes, it's a, a, a way of uh, digging because I think it, uh, um, there are uh, musical information centers um, across. Um, uh, I, I think, sorry, uh, let me see because this is the information center, I think. Yeah, um, yes, there is an international association of music information centers. Yeah. Uh, let me see, and I think maybe the, I don't know uh, them very well, but um, I think there are maybe um, different. Uh, sorry, um, the yes, uh, international of music inform music information centers. Yes, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I think I th yes. Uh, well, uh, maybe, and I think that, that it exists in in many countries. So yeah, uh, uh, this one is the Portuguese one. <laughs> okay, uh, so it's uh, well, <laughs> as we talk also about composition. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, I, uh, <laughs> no, it's it's good. I mean, for I mean, you know, whenever you get um, the any conversations around contemporary music tend to focus around Germany, uh, France, and, and England, mostly London and Manchester. Um, and I think it's, uh, yeah, there, you know, Europe is a big continent and I'll, I'll, there alone, there's hundreds and <laughs> thousands of composers. And then Asia is another a huge continent. Africa is huge, you know, and it's, I'm, I feel really bad of my own ignorance of kind of what, you know, I tend to, I myself am guilty of focusing around Italy, France, Germany, um, whenever I'm looking, trying to find out sort of what music is happening. Um, and I think it's, it's equally important to be looking at, you know, all the places mm. that um, interesting and exciting things are happening. Yeah. But um, so, no, thank you. I will be posting all that um, that information okay. and links, and, okay. and hopefully we'll f I'll find a few uh, no, interesting it, scores. Um, it was very interesting. I I I, if, I don't know because uh, maybe for someone that uh, doesn't to be uh, so much. Um, uh, uh, annoyed by uh, the, the, the with with a very difficult. Uh, mm. I, I will put the. I, I'm going to to send you also this. Um, uh, I think. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, I, I'm going to put the the. I'm going to. Sorry, I'm just trying to put this here. I'm going to send you uh, my uh, my little uh, patch mm -hmm. 
the OM to MIDI patch. Uh, it's it's a very small patch, so yeah. maybe if you if someone wants to use it because what's a, a simple thing, um, well, <laughs> it's it's okay. <laughs> no, that's perfect. I'll, I'll include that. And uh, thanks very much for um, for showing me. Um, all of your your compositions and your your compositional process um and uh it's um thanks for taking the time um i'm sure lots no, of people very... find it really useful as well and you know um i i think that's uh yeah thank you it was really great and I think we're coming up, we're now coming up to like the two hour mark. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> I think we've covered, we've covered a lot. Uh, thanks very much. And um, I'll be putting Juiced in as well. Um, so that's perfect. So, so see you in the next two weeks. Two weeks. <laughs> okay. Thanks, nice. Yeah. Looking you. forward. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Ella. Thank you. And, uh, it was Great very nice. You. And uh, it's very... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it gives you uh, the interest to, uh, as I saw also in the page, to to go into open music and uh, restart digging and thinking in composition. So thank you again for the initiative. Okay. No problem. Thanks very much for for being a part of it, and uh, I'll see you in two weeks then. Okay. See you. Okay. Nice. Bye. Ciao.